Welcome to our kitchen and I'm Holly and we're the cooking family and today we're going to show you how we make chicken tortilla soup. Uh, it is a great soup and we love it around here. Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> Hola mis amigos. Did I hear you say <laughs> that we're going to make chicken tortilla soup? Yes, you Just did. like mi abuela made? That's right. Oh, oh, that's so exciting. It's just in time for Cinco de Mayo. Uh, today's the 14th. Tomorrow's the 15th. The, so do you mean the Quince de Mayo? No, Cinco de Mayo, the great holiday in Mexico. <laughs> Sorry, you're a few days late. We, we missed Cinco de Mayo? We did. But this soup is great any day of the year. <laughs> Don't be sad, it's great. <laughs> oh, poor guy. He'll still enjoy the soup though. Okay, so our chicken tortilla soup is made of several ingredients, but these are simple ingredients and um, I'll tell you what they are. So uh, we'll get started. So this is chicken broth, homemade chicken bone broth that we made in our instant pot and we don't add salt to ours hey, so babe. this is salt free yes who's that guy that what guy uh You're i'm really not sad. really sure Muy triste. <laughs> Muy triste. can i help today i would love it okay thanks uh okay so also we'll post the link uh to our chicken bone broth in maybe the comments or the notes uh, but we show exactly how we do chicken bone broth in our instant pot and we make this regularly we make it so often because it's so easy in the instant pot that we don't even freeze it anymore we just store it in jars in the fridge um, also we're gonna use black beans that we cooked in the instant pot pre pre made ahead uh, diced chicken that you can make in your instant pot or just buy rotisserie chicken two cans of uh, diced tomatoes with green chilies one and a quarter cups of salsa. Uh, we like to make our soup really colorful by using colorful bell peppers. So even though we're not gonna use all four whole bell peppers, we're gonna use about a half of each one. And we like to use cumin, onion, and garlic for a lot of flavor. And I think that's it. And um, in the middle of this video, well, after we get the tortilla soup going, we're going to make some homemade guacamole, and that's his favorite. It's my favorite to eat. It's favorite to sure. eat. <laughs> it is so good. Um, so go ahead and like and share this video, and we hope that you'll um, go like us on Facebook at The Cooking Fam, uh, right? Yes, Facebook.com yes. Facebook slash, Facebook slash The Cooking Fam. And, and then, when they're watching, there's a place to get notifications. Oh, so awesome. If you like these videos and you want to get notified whenever uh, we go live, just be sure to click that button so that you'll, uh, you'll know, you won't miss any of it. That'd be great. Um, normally, uh, one of the things our family loves to do is to cook as a family and have, uh, you know, several of us in here or just me and another a kid. So we're going to give you tips along the way of how we do that. So the first thing that goes in on this soup is... Um, I can't get it open. <laughs> That's why I'm here. That's why you're I here. I'm going to need a towel. It's I wet. know. So I uh, jarred this up while it was really hot. And so the, the lid is really shrunk on there. So um, a lot of times we will saute. And this actually needs to be preheating. And I'm going to turn it down to saute and select because um, we're going to press start. A lot of times we will saute our aromatic vegetables like the bell pepper, onion, garlic ahead of time. But with this recipe, um, we like to make it uh, so that everything can be preheating in the pot while we chop up those veggies. So the recipe calls for six cups of broth. And this is made for the six quart instant pot. So that's four cups. And then we need two more cups. So this is a half gallon jar. Um, we love to make chicken bone broth because it's nutritious. 
It doesn't have any added uh, chemical ingredients like you might find at the store. And we can control our salt level, which I also really love. So the next thing I'm going to go ahead and add is our salsa. We call for one and a quarter cups. Let's see, this is going to do just a little bit more than one. And then we have a little bit left to dip our chips in. So this is going to be preheating while we chop our veggies and that will allow our whole pot of soup to come up to pressure more quickly. Okay, and then I'm going to open up the cans of Rotel. Um, I love to include the little ones, like a two-year-old, three-year-old. They can even go with you to the pantry. You can show them where you keep the, the canned tomatoes and things. And then they also love to help open up the can. It's a really simple way. Obviously, they can't hold this necessarily, but you can hold it with their hand and it allows you as the mom to, or the, the adult helping your child or grandchild to cook, to be close together and um, enjoy cooking together as a family. So there's one can and here's the second can. Um, store brand diced tomatoes with green chilies are fine for this. Mild is also fine. That just depends on your family's spiciness level. Um, sometimes it's better to err on the side of less spicy because you can add things at the end like Tabasco sauce or cayenne pepper if you really like it spicy. So that's the Rotel. And then I'm going to add the black beans. So we cook our beans from dried beans in the Instant Pot. It's super simple to do. And then for this recipe, we want three cups of black beans uh, cooked, drained, and rinsed. And what we do is just take this metal um, strainer and take the water from the sink and just rinse that off. That allows your broth to stay clear and not turn black. Like if you just had, if you don't drain it, then you'll have a black base soup, which will be more like a black bean soup, which we also love. So those are the black beans. Three cups of cooked black beans is equivalent to two 14 and a half ounce cans of black beans at the store. So if you're just buying canned black beans, use two cans, two 14 ounce cans. And then we have uh, two to three cups of cooked diced chicken. We're gonna go ahead and add that. And this is all pre-prepared. Um, we keep our, I'm gonna, I think that's plenty there. I don't want to overfill the pot. Okay. Um, yeah, and where's your mark? Okay. My mark, here's the PC Max. In the six quart instant pot, you don't want to fill it more than, well, with any pressure cooker. You do not want to pressure cook with more than two thirds the volume of the pot. So two thirds is about um, one gallon or four quarts in the six quart instant pot. So I watch my line when we're filling it all the way up with liquid. Um, and so we should have enough space here for our onions and bell peppers. And I'm also gonna add cumin. Our recipe calls for two tablespoons of cumin. And I have my measuring spoon right here. Okay. Okay, this is a two tablespoon measuring spoon and I'm just gonna we really enjoy cumin so if I spill a little over that is fine by me it just smells so good there you go I love these big jars from Sam's Club because it just allows you to use a lot and not feel like well it's a, it's a great budget it's a bit, yeah I like the price per ounce that's sure. right the price per ounce is way less and you don't run out of it as often. Okay, now before we go on, I wanted to show you. Uh, so when we cook our black beans in the Instant Pot, sometimes we store them like this and if we're gonna freeze them, we'll put them in a zip top bag like this and then freeze them flat. So I just wanted to show you that that's how we uh, store our black beans. And right now these are not frozen yet because we just made them yesterday. We'll have to show 
How would you black beans sometime? Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, black beans are fantastic in the Instant Pot. Okay, so next let's do the onion. Do you want to do the onion? I know, I got some bad marks last time. When I, <laughs> okay. When I did, I'll do the peppers. Take notes. Okay, I'm watching. Okay, so uh, on an onion you have the stem end and the root end. And um, you cut off the whole stem end first, and then you can set your onion down nice and firmly so it won't wiggle around. This root part is kind of yucky to have in your food, so I always just cut that off because those little strings tend to spread out on your cutting board. I'm going to make myself a little space. Okay, so... Um, Another thing is that onions can be really uh, hard to peel, but once you cut it in half, it is the peel just comes right off. Um, I cannot tell you how much time I've sat and tried to peel. Gosh, when I was a teenager cooking at home and we would just peel it whole and it takes forever. So it's just much easier and quicker if you cut it in half first. So now uh, when we dice an onion, we just cut the half, go down at an angle like the rays of the sun and go more vertical as you get around to the top. You want to be pinching the knife blade while you're uh, slicing your onion, while you're using a knife, um, so that you have full control over that, that sharp knife. Um, I really recommend investing in a good kitchen knife it will make cooking in your kitchen, it will make all the difference in the world in how easy and simple it is to uh, cook. Because I, if I run out of onion, I feel like I can't, there's nothing I can think of to cook that doesn't have onion. So um, almost every recipe just starts with an onion. That is another um, just thing that has been really effective for me is uh, teaching my kids, I have, we have seven children and they, let's see, the oldest four definitely know how to chop up an onion. Miriam is learning. She is nine. Um, but if you're just needing to get dinner started, you can go ahead and just get that onion chopped and that will just get you well on the way. Um, my dear friend, Eva Sang, who may be watching, told me when I was a very, very newlywed. Um, we were probably married a couple months. Yeah, this is the, we're also giving our, our marriage tips in this episode. <laughs> since it's our, That's our right, this is our anniversary. And this is one of the top tips <laughs> to lasting 21 years for sure. Yeah, so thank you, Eva. Um, here's the tip. She said, if your husband is coming home and you haven't started dinner yet, or if the husband is the one cooking that day. Yes, we, we don't want to be... <laughs> Stereotyping here. Anyone <laughs> That's can right. cook. That's right. Anyone can cook. So if you're the one supposed to be cooking dinner and you haven't started yet, just put some butter in a pan, chop up an onion, get that sauteing, and when they walk in, the house is filled with that yummy smell, and they'll be like, I'll "Demonstrate." Dinner is ready. Oh, that smells <laughs> good. What you got cooking? What's for dinner? Man, right mm. now we're just sauteing up some Man. onion and butter, and it's. So fantastic. So glad I married you. That smells so good. That's I don't know what we're making, but that's how we're going to start it. Scene. That's how it goes. So that's a great tip from our dear friend Eva. Um, I like to use the purple onions because they are extra nutritious. The purple color, and I haven't researched all of this, but the purple color in any food has um, a nutritious... Thing in it. I can't remember what it is. Antioxidants. It has antioxidants according to my cameraman. Um, so that is why I choose purple and also it's just really pretty. They're a little bit more expensive than the yellow onions or the white onions. Um, yellow onions and white onions are fine and uh, so whichever onions you want. They don't add any flavor that I've ever detected. So either whichever one you want to do. Okay, so we have a tiny bit of space left for the bell peppers. Okay. Do you want to explain? He's had a few opportunities to do bell peppers. 
Have I? Or do you want me to tell? Well, you better talk me through it. Okay. I didn't practice. Okay. So just... I'm going to cut it in half, right? Cut it in half vertically, straight down the middle. Right. But this has got a nice little cap on it. That's right. So it goes straight down the middle. There you and go. And now, now I know the next part. You're going to okay. core it. Put your fingers back up in here. Pull and that out. This is just the funnest part. I love pulling out that core. Now, are we doing dices on this? We're doing dices. So I'm going to go in strips and then in I usually flip it over okay. and just make my slices first and then turn those slices. And I'm going to take this out of the way because we're only going to use really uh, the recipe calls for one and a half cups of diced bell peppers. And these are kind of big actually. These, these are huge. The yellow ones and the colored ones are very big. So we really don't need the whole thing. We've talked about doing a, a special YouTube show called Hubby Can't Cook, <laughs> where Holly just comes and teaches me all the basics of cooking because I don't know much. Even though I watch it, I just don't have a lot of time to practice. That's right. So then I'm going to go like this and go... Uh, yep, just go across and dice them up. So would, would you watch a show like that? Would you watch... A blubbering, bumbling <laughs> husband learning how to cook, starting with boiling water. <laughs> Actually, I can boil water. I've been making coffee a long time. That's right. He makes great coffee. Okay. Now, do I want this smaller or is that going to be... I probably would prefer them smaller, but here's the thing. When you get caught up in perfectionism in the kitchen, it zaps the joy out of the process and it's only dinner. There's no perfection needed here. Okay, so we're just gonna put a few of these orange ones in. Uh, we love lots of colors, but if you only have green bell peppers or if you only have one color, so we don't need to add any more of these, so you can, can just a, put them in here. Can you put them in that? Okay. We'll just throw them in this one. And then. Our little scraper thing. Uh, the bench scraper mm -hmm. that is coming this way. And then I will cut the rest. Oh, I see. Is that okay? I didn't do good enough. Huh? <laughs> okay, so we've got our trash bowl here. And I'm going to set this aside. So these are the halves that we're not using. We'll chop these up and freeze them later. Don't want to take up the time for that right now. Um, I'm going to do about that much of the yellow, and then we'll go ahead and do a red. Um, ki my kids love to eat these raw too. Normally we freeze most of them, but the colorful bell, pe bell peppers taste so good um, that they will probably actually want to slice these up into strips and just eat those raw because they're yummy. I think their favorite is the red because they're the sweetest. Okay, that's pretty good. And then we'll do this green one. This one's a lot smaller. The green one is a lot smaller than the, the other ones. And you can have that. And they're just so beautiful. But like I said, um, the green ones are the least expensive. The colorful ones are more expensive. I really love it when I find them on sale and we have a big pepper chopping party and then it just makes a typically expensive grocery item a lot more affordable because when these are in season, you can find the colored ones for 50 cents. I have even found them at my favorite little store here in DFW, uh, Town Talk, sometimes for three for a dollar for the colored bell peppers. But if you walk into the grocery store on a normal day, they are over a dollar. Um, or sometimes they're on sale for a dollar each. So if you can find them on sale and um, freeze them up in a zip top bag, then first of all, you get to take advantage of the budget, uh, the sale price. And then secondly, you have a major part of your meal prep already done. Okay, so the recipe calls for one and a half cups. And here I have one and a half cups. I'm just gonna leave that since my pot is super full. 
And the last thing we need to put in is the garlic. Okay, I'm gonna move this aside. How many cloves are we doing of garlic? We are doing five cloves of garlic. Um, we're kind of of the opinion that you can never really do too much garlic, so you can do five, give or take. Um, I, I say to give. Your, your taste. You say give? Give. I'm gonna wipe this off briefly. Um, if you don't have fresh garlic on hand, I highly recommend trying it if you've never tried it before. But if you don't have fresh garlic on hand, you can use powdered garlic. You can use um, the, the minced jarred garlic from the store. There's also a product um, in the freezer section that's finely minced garlic that I think of all those products tastes the best. It's more pricey than um, the garlic powder or the jarred garlic. And I use that mallet to break these up so that uh, I can get the paper off easily. That's right. The garlic tends to be really sticky. Um, if you buy the jarred garlic, um, I think it gives a funny twang to your food. But um, if you'll just take the little amount that you want to use and put it in a metal strainer and rinse it off, then the citric acid that it's preserved in goes away mostly, and that makes it uh, not add as much of that twang uh, of the jarred garlic. So that's um, what I like to do if that's what I have on hand. And this is getting nice and hot, which is gonna make it come up to pressure a lot quicker once we close it up. And I'm using our chopper. This is our Pampered Chef <clears throat> one that we uh, recently replaced, and we also have an OXO one that we use sometimes. It's a great stress reliever. I'm just gonna keep going. <laughs> In 21 years of marriage, have we had any stress? Nope. <laughs> Not with each other. <laughs> it's all those other people. It's all those other people. By which I mean. <laughs> the short ones? The short ones. No, they're No, good. he's they're, teasing. They're just watching. So There's definitely been stress in life, but. Things like chopping garlic make it all go away. And eating it. And eating it. it smells really good. Uh, garlic is super great for your immune system. And we love to use lots of it. And it's a very inexpensive ingredient too. Okay, here is our lovely little bench scraper. That makes things come off the cutting board much easier. Uh, so this is, what, six cloves of garlic? And so you can use how much you want. This is too much for you. But it's gonna be fantastic and it smells amazing already. Thank you, I tried really hard. Yeah, you did great. Okay, if you are um, keto, or watching your carb intake, you could stop right there and there are very few carbs in here, a few from the beans. Um, if you're extremely low carb, you could even leave out those beans. But <clears throat> we like to add a few, well, this is tortilla soup after all. It is. So we um, add corn tortillas and we just break these up. This is a super great job for a little one to do, two year old would have a fantastic time. We just rip these up and pour them in the pot. What they do is they add a lot of flavor and a little bit of thickness to the soup uh, to just add a little body. And it tastes super yummy. Uh, it's also fantastic without those tortillas. Okay, so look at how colorful that looks. You've got your purple, orange, yellow, green, black beans and chicken and it's already smelling great and now we're going to go ahead and turn on this little instant pot uh, to pressure cook so we've been sauteing we've put our our liquids in now we're going to just check the lid make sure everything's as it should be that silicone valve is seated um, and then we're going to cancel the saute that we had it on we're going to put it up here on soup. Uh, the soup function in the Instant Pot uh, just cooks it at a little bit more, um, not quite as hot. And so it's already set for six minutes, but I'm going to select soup. I'm going to select the time and then show you that you can change the time by turning this dial. And we want it to cook for six minutes. 
and I'm going to select that. We do want high pressure. We don't want it to delay and we do want it to keep warm and I'm going to press start. Um, something else that I wanted to say crossed my mind just a half a second ago. About settings? Oh, if you're having trouble, recently I, my Instant Pots all, I may have mentioned this last week, um, our Instant Pots were all kind of not really wanting to come to pressure very easy and um, we replaced the silicone valves and voila, they're coming the to pressure, no problem. Yeah, the ring on the inside. So if you start to have any trouble, if you are a heavy user of your Instant Pot and you start to have trouble with it coming up to pressure, try replacing that. Even though it looks like it's fine um, and it, it's not broken or anything, it can still be slowing down uh, or hampering the ability of your Instant Pot to come up to pressure. Well, so. I could feel a big difference in the one I took out. Oh, yeah. Besides the discoloration, it was a lot, a lot more soft. Floppy. So the new one was, it had some firmness to it. Yes. Uh, Amber asked if there were going to be any kid helpers today. And um, I'm trying not to be offended by that <laughs> comment that, that uh, somehow I'm not a good enough replacement, but um, it's not working. I'm, I'm offended. So No, I'm just kidding. Uh, the kids, uh, they're taking a week off. They're actually behind the scenes doing all the tech stuff. This is a family affair, so uh, they will be back next week and some other times when we um, when we go live. We don't just do this on Thursdays, although we have been lately, but uh, we occasionally throw in some other ones during the week. So again, follow us, get notified if you want to see more about what we're doing. That's right. Especially coming up now with Calf Watch coming up, we might uh, be doing a little bit more, just showing people uh, the calf in the. <laughs> the baby coming so it's gonna be exciting around here yes we're super excited okay so uh, getting things out and ready so we're gonna make some guacamole um, when it's a party night we love to make guacamole have it with tortilla soup um, or just make guacamole and just eat it because it's yum um, and what, what uh, the ingredients are three avocados we have four right here um, but we're just going to use three of those. Two Roma tomatoes. These are my favorite tomatoes to buy in the grocery store. They have the most flavor, in my opinion, of store-bought tomatoes. And uh, that's what we have until our garden grows and produces lots of tomatoes. Um, some juice from limes, and we're going to show you how we juice that. It calls for garlic and cilantro and a little bit of onion. Uh, and you know what? I forgot something. Uh, the jalapeno in the... Well, I was going to uh, save some of that garlic from earlier, and um, I totally forgot about it. Oh, so I need so, to make some more? Yeah, will you chop up some more garlic? How much? Um, let's see. One, Just one clove of garlic. Can you just do one? One? Yeah, just one. Uh, someone asked, how long did the ceiling ring last? Uh, gosh. Well, the first one was this, four years. I, I don't know how long that. The first one lasted four years? Well, I don't know that we replaced it. So we had long. replaced my very first. So oh, we had, okay. It's hard to remember because, um, but we've only replaced that one, correct? I think Before so. now? So we probably should have replaced it a little. Probably sooner. should have so, replaced I mean, it a little. A couple sooner. years, a couple good years, user. but heavy use. So I mean, I ours would, is used. We have an instant pot going, at least one going every day. At least something. one every day. And sometimes multiple. Yesterday, because we were making the black beans, the broth, dinner. Um, seems like we had four out on the counter, and they were all dirty. Okay. Now I'm just double checking. This is all the garlic you want me to put in this guacamole. Yeah. Is this what we normally do? That's what we normally do. It really is. Okay. All right. Oopsie. So I'm going to set this here. I'll show you how we chop up a Roma tomato to dice it. So, um, and I, you know what? I put these gloves on for the jalapeno. So I'm going to show you the jalapeno and then I can take these off. Okay. So I already washed this. This is a fresh jalapeno. Uh, they have always been a little bit intimidating to me because I never really um, 
did it much before, but we'll have to show them how to make poppers sometime. Um, they're fantastic. But anyway, fresh jalapenos really add a lot of wonderful flavor. We don't make poppers in the Instant Pot. We don't make poppers in the Instant Pot. That is so true. But I'm wearing rubber gloves because they jalapenos have a lot of oils um, that can really burn your skin, burn your eyes, and you don't want that on your skin. So I'm also taking out the ribs. I'm being really thorough. With a bell pepper, I um, do not worry about every single little seed, and I don't worry about perfection. But because I'm feeding this to children, I'm leaving those little seeds out. And I'm going to even clear it off the cutting board here in a sec. Um, I'm just taking that top core out and checking for seeds, and I don't have any more. Uh, this recipe calls for one half of a jalapeno pepper, and that is how much is right here. This is a half. And I'm going to wipe these hands before I even pick up my knife. Oh, here's one seed. I'm going to get rid of it. This is a place where I try to be perfectionistic because we don't want that in. Um, we don't want a little one to get the bite of that. Do we have a bowl we're putting all this in? Uh, we need a bowl to put all this in. Okay. Yes, this is the new special bowlless guacamole. <laughs> Just pile it on your cutting board. Okay, so I'm chopping this up really fine. And we do it basically the same way as we do the regular bell pepper, but just chop it up real tiny, which it takes a little bit more care and you have to slow down. It's not nearly as fast. Um, and then we're gonna just chop and we're gonna be careful to get little bitty pieces. And that way you don't get a super spicy bite. Now, if you are a heat lover, and you want to make them a little bit bigger pieces, you just go right ahead. Uh, but kiddos are going to be enjoying this, so we don't want it to be too hot. Uh, I have also used poblano peppers in here. You could even use bell peppers. Poblano peppers are pretty mild. Um, some of them have more heat than others, but you could use a poblano pepper in here if even if the jalapeno is even too much spice. Okay, so I'm gonna need a little bowl for the, um, for the basically pico de gallo. Okay, so I have this bowl. I'm gonna put these jalapenos in. And so essentially what we're doing here is making a pico de gallo. I'm gonna put it in here and mashing up guacamole. So if you love pico de gallo, this is uh, something that we've used. Sometimes we'll make a double or triple batch of this portion and then use it as pico um, and then use part of it in the guac. Okay, so I'm wiping this off from the jalapenos and then I'm gonna take off my whole gloves inside out Um, just taking these gloves off inside out and I'm going to throw them away and we're not going to handle that jalapeno anymore. Okay, so next we need to go ahead and cut up the jalapeno. I mean, just did that. The avocado. Which of these are the most ripe? This one's good and ripe. Uh, you want to be able to squeeze the, the avocado. And... Um, I'll show you how we do it. So make sure you have hand protection on. I'm going to go ahead and put a cut glove on. Uh, we love these cut gloves uh, for our kids especially. I don't use them with everything, but when I'm going to cut like this, I'm going to go ahead and use it. And then I have a dish towel protecting my hand. And I'm just going to take, um, take this knife and I'm going to carefully, slowly, gently, Cut around the uh, seed. If you've never cut up an avocado, there's a big seed right in the middle. And you, I'm just cutting all the way around. And then I'm going to give it a twist. And there is the inside of the avocado. 
And then we're gonna take a spoon and um, we need the bowl. Yes, here's the bowl for the avocados. And do you wanna go ahead and chop this lime in half? Um, you can get the most juice out of your lime if you'll uh, roll over. I'm going to show you this. Yeah, roll it like this. And if they're at room temperature and you roll them, that's when you're going to get the most juice out of a lime. Okay. How many of these are we doing? I'm sorry? How many of these are we juicing? Um, it says the juice of one lime. Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to just scoop the avocado out of this little shell. Um, sometimes the kids enjoy using these as a little boat. It's pretty fun and cute. And then um, some people say that the pit of an avocado can uh, help keep your guacamole from oxidizing. So avocado oxidizes really quickly like a banana. It'll turn brown. So you want to take measures to prevent it from turning brown. One of those is juicing a uh, lime because citric acid keeps um, keeps that oxidation from happening. So do you want to go ahead and show them how to juice a lemon? I mean a lime. Yes. <laughs> uh, we have this nice little antique. I don't know, is it aluminum, tin? It's, I think it's, it's probably flimsy, aluminum. It, uh, it, it holds up well. I, I don't like using the plastic ones. That plastic ones are the only ones I have really found in the grocery store. And um, they don't really work super well. You can also use one of those squeeze lime juicers that where you squeeze down on it. In our experience, we haven't gotten as much juice out right. of those. Right. You just feel like you're kind of wasting. You know, when you give it a, when you're able to like rotate it around on this. Uh, right. You can like really, really press really down. Uh, don't worry about getting that pulp in there. You don't want seeds in your guacamole, but usually we just go ahead and put that pulp in there. Um, when we're uh, preparing it. This is going to be the perfect Catorce de Mayo celebration. <laughs> Catorce de Mayo. That's right. I don't know what happened on this day in Mexico, but something did. That's we right. And celebrate it. Okay. Okay, we've got, we need to do one more jalapeno. I mean, uh, why do I keep calling that a jalapeno? I don't know. One more avocado. And you can go ahead and pour uh, about, pour that lime juice all over the avocado. Pour the whole thing in? The whole thing in. The juice of one lime. This is a technique I learned at uh, Le Cordon Bleu. <laughs> <laughs> okay, these avocados look great. They're a tiny bit firm, but they are not overripe at all. Sometimes you, if they're overripe, they'll be a little bit brown. Uh, you can just cut off the part that's brown um, and avoid putting it in, but it won't hurt you if you eat it. Okay. And there is that. Okay, now we're gonna add some salt to this. Uh, half a teaspoon of salt. Each of these little scoops is a quarter teaspoon, so I'm gonna put two of those in. Sprinkle that over, and then we get to do the super fun part, and that's mashing the avocado. So we take our handy potato masher, and I'm just going to avoid those pits that are in there and try to, like this one still has a lot of pit. Uh, we like a lot of texture in our guac, so um, these are kind of firm. So I'm not going to completely puree it, but if you like your guacamole really uh, super smooth, then you can do that. Could you use an immersion blender for... Something um, like this, or would it not really do much? I, I don't know. Uh, it's an, I have not used an immersion blender yet. It's on my list of things that I want to try, but I don't have one, so I you probably know, would not. I, could keep I think it'd be a little bit too pureed. If you want to move on to slicing tomatoes and things. Okay, that'd be great. Okay, so now I'm going to slice up our Roma tomato. 
actually dice. And I'm going to show you how I like to do it. I like to keep it intact uh, so that this stem end works to my advantage because uh, it just makes it easier to hold on to. So I go down and slice it in strips, while, but not slicing all the way through that stem. And then I turn it 90 degrees and slice down the other way. I want really small little pieces of tomato and see how that keeps it all together. A lot of the seeds and juice run out that I don't want in there. And then I'm going to turn it the other way and make my tiny little dices, diced tomatoes. And then this part, the stem end that I was already gonna cut off and throw away has been a nice little handy tool the whole time, and now we're done with that. Probably give that to the chickens. Okay, and here's the next one I'll show you. So we're just gonna slice straight down through, but keep that stem end intact, and then slice it all the way. You're gonna want a good sharp knife. Uh, tomatoes are notoriously challenging to cut. A seri serrated knives work the best or a nice sharp chef's knife. So then I'm dicing this the other way and voila, that has stayed together nicely and helped me hold on to the tomato and now um, we're going to put it in. So uh, here's the uh, garlic he did. So we're going to put that in with that jalapeno. Oh, there's a little bit more. Awesome. We want to get every little bit of that yummy garlic. Okay, here goes the tomato. And now we need a little bit of cumin. Okay, I lost my rag. Here it is. Okay, just wipe this up. Awesome. Um, where did the cumin go? Here it is. And it, we just use a half a teaspoon of cumin. So the palm of your hand is about a teaspoon. I don't want to use quite that much because I don't want it to overpower. So that is about a half a teaspoon. Feel free to measure if you are a measuring person. And feel free to use your hand and um, just do it to taste if you like to experiment with your food. Okay, so a little bit of cumin, garlic, and now a little bit of onion. So this just calls for a half a medium onion. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this in half and leave the rest of this onion for later. I'll cut off that stem. I'll just cut off the little furry, hairy things. Peel it. Um, what I forgot to do earlier was go ahead and chop up a little bit of extra onion and I could have, um, I could have streamlined my time earlier if I had remembered to do that. So uh, with guacamole, I really like, and pico, I like the pieces of onion really, really, really fine because um, I'm eating them raw. I love onion, but I am, I don't like huge bites of raw onion. So when I'm doing it raw, I cut it in tiny pieces. And so you see, just cut it really, really thin. And that is another place where a nice sharp knife comes in so handy. Okay, so this Instant Pot just came up to pressure and it beeped letting us know that it was at pressure and starting to count down. Okay, so half of a medium sized onion. That's gonna be about half of a cup. One medium onion is about one cup. So you need about half of a cup of diced, finely diced onion. And you'll see that this makes a nice little pico de gallo. We also want a little bit of, um, if I were making this for pico, I probably would do another tomato. Those were kind of small. And now I'm gonna take a little bit of cilantro. We uh, have a little herb garden and um, the fresh cilantro has just been growing and it's so lovely. It has a lot of flavor. 
um, just a little bit of cilantro, one tablespoon of fresh cilantro. Okay. And then also a sprinkle or two of cayenne pepper. So just one or two sprinkles, depending on your family and how spicy you like it. And then we're just going to stir this up a little bit more. And then the final step is to mix it in with our guacamole, with the avocado. Okay. So we're just going to pour this in with that avocado. And this is, you know, it is such a great um, appetizer, snack, treat, but it is full of, it's just nothing but vegetables and nutritious, yummy things. So it's one of those snacks that is like actually really healthy for you and so, so yummy. Awesome. Are you ready to try some? I was ready a long time ago, but I've been patient. You have been very patient. Paciencia. He's got the whole bowl of chips. Hey, you try first. Okay. Okay, we're going to taste it and see if it needs any salt or... Did we add salt at all? Mm-hmm. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, it tastes great, but um, I'll even show them, no. maybe. I need some plastic wrap. Uh, the kids are in the back there grabbing some plastic wrap, and I'll show you how to store this. So. You want to cover your um, guacamole completely. The actual plastic wrap. Oh. I can go get it. You can go get it. It's in the pantry behind me. So the press and seal doesn't work because it's real sticky and it'll, it'll, your guacamole will stick all the way to the press and seal. Uh, so it's so one of those things that you just kind of need to have both on hand. And when you cover up your guac, that's good. So it's good now, but in two hours, it's going to be even better. I can't wait that long. It's going to be gone. <laughs> so you should. The ideally, you would make this a couple of hours ahead and just leave it at room temperature, with the plastic wrap on. You know, wrestling with plastic wrap. Is that enough? Yeah, that's great. Let's just cut holes in it. That's okay. Okay, and then lay the plastic wrap directly down on. If you leave it up on top of the bowl, uh, it will the guacamole will turn brown. But if you lay this all the way completely on top of your guacamole, that keeps all the air off and all the oxygen off, so it won't oxidize. And then, if you want to put a lid on top of that, you're welcome to. Um, so that's how you want to store it so it doesn't turn brown and just keep that plastic wrap all the way directly on top. And even if you store leftovers, if you put them in like this, put it in the fridge, um, this is ideally just made a couple hours ahead of time and not a whole day. But if you end up having leftovers, you can store it. It turns a little bit brown, still tastes really good. So there's your guacamole. And, um, now we're gonna check on this tortilla soup that's been cooking behind me. We made a second pot because we weren't sure how long it would all take. We'll set this aside to be eaten later. It all smells so good. Okay, when we serve our tortilla soup, I'm just reaching up here to grab this. When we serve our tortilla soup, we like to uh, use sour cream on the top, cheddar cheese, a little squeeze of lime, some cilantro is fantastic. And then um, if I could have that serving bowl. Um, this recipe is on our website at uh, thecookingfamily.com. And you can go search for it on there or go to our recipe index and find it's tortilla soup. Well. It is also posted in the comments. Um, we recommend that you pressure cook it for six minutes and then allow it to naturally release for about 10 minutes 
but you can put this on anytime and if you let it natural release and keep warm in the Instant Pot, it'll stay great and wonderful for several hours. You could even put it on in the morning and then have it completely ready at dinner time or lunch time. Um, so this has been releasing for 40 minutes. What you looking for? Uh, here's here's yes. a wooden spoon. really good does look really good it's still boiling you can see the top of it is still really boiling yeah, yummy this was releasing for 40 minutes yes and it still uh, had a little pressure in it most of those um, tortillas are pretty much dissolved adding a lot of thickness and just looks so fantastic He's getting a little ice because these are, everything is so hot when it comes out of the Instant Pot, you just do not want to rush in to taste testing or you will burn your tongue. It is not worth it. Spoken from experience. Spoken from experience. Let's just do a small one. Okay. Okay. So here. Stir that up a little bit. We could probably add a little more now with this. This dish will have the four cubes in. Awesome. Okay. So good. It looks so yummy. It's colorful. This is super nutritious. Um, it's so it's great for your family. It's um, very easy to make. And our family just loves it. It's great for Cinco de Mayo or Catorce de, de Mayo. Or I think we'll probably have it on Quinte also. We, we might have it on Quinte bowl, also two, with two, two pots. Here. Are we going to add any? Where's your tasting or, spoon? Oh, yeah. Cheese. Yes, we are. Here goes a dollop of sour cream. Some cheddar cheese. We really like to buy the blocks of cheese and just shred them ourselves. Uh, it tastes so much fresher. And... It also doesn't have all the cellulose powder in it. Um, and now whenever I try, whenever I taste uh, bagged shredded cheese, it sort of has a weird flavor and texture. So uh, kind of gets spoiled when you use fresh ingredients. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's not really any more expensive for the... Uh, I think it's less expensive to yeah, buy the two pound bag of block. block. Um, it's and just a little more work. You got to do the a little bit more work, shredding. and you do want to get yourself a good cheese shredder. Um, we really like the microplane one. It's super sharp and cuts really well, so it makes it quick and easy to just shred up some cheese. Ready? I am. This is like our this wedding. This is our anniversary. Mmm. <laughs> That's great. We could use a little salt. Mm-hmm. I agree. That's fantastic. Oh, it tastes great. Good level of garlic. High five. Awesome. I'm glad that I was the difference maker this time. You were. For sure. Here goes a little bit of salt. Uh, so don't forget to season up your food. Um, we use so, uh, chicken broth that has no salt in it at all. Uh, the salsa adds a lot of salt. The Rotel adds some salt. So. You don't want to start off with a salty chicken broth and then um, add salt and have it be too salty. So, okay. That's great. Well, uh, we are the cooking family and we're so thankful that you've joined us today. Thank you to the Instant Pot 101 for Beginners group for joining us. And uh, we want you to know that you can cook and enjoy a great meal with your family. Um, hold on. Elijah, There's a, a, one last little thing, your first little anniversary gift, <laughs> our 21 years of marriage, and I know I said I wanted to grow old with you, but I didn't think it would happen so soon. <laughs> Thank you. I'm happy that was so to sweet. be with you. I love you. That's very thoughtful. Thank you, babe. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much.
Thank you for joining us. And remember to make lots of comments if you want to see a lot more of me. Just let us know and I can make it happen. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Y'all take care.